So this is a game uh, we have before us, a game between Harold Wanyama, uh, the East African, uh, let me say the African uh, number three in rapid chess. And then we have this guy, Patrick Kaoma, an FM also uh, from Uganda. So these guys are battling out in round seven, which I consider a very, uh, a very competitive round in this in this tournament. So this tournament ended with uh, Kaoma Patrick being the champion, the new Ugandan, Ugandan champion. And then we also have, uh, I would also consider him as the new East African champion, chess champion. So this game was in round seven and it was a very powerful game where one of them, I believe is the game that changed uh, destiny. We saw Grandmaster Timur Garayev uh, passing by in this tournament. We saw various players, uh, Mele Takali winning the ladies section, and it was a very beautiful tournament. So let's see the game that changed this this tournament. The game that made history at the Uganda Open round seven. A game between uh, FM Fidemaster Kaoma Patrick versus Fidemaster Harold Wanyama. So with all that said, let's see what happened in this game. So this game started with uh, the English opening on the board. Patrick always opens up with the English opening, C4, which is standard move, very uh, standard. The knight F6, a very standard opening, English opening, the Anglo-Indian defense on board. So we have the knights here, and then we see E6 from Harrod. So everything is pretty standard, and everything goes on uh, well and normal. Then we have the Neo-Catalan in this position. Of course, we expect this bishop coming out. Uh, this is a standard position. English opening the Neo-Catalan. So, every, so everything comes out. This pawn is declined. So it's more of a, a declined variations. The English opening Neo-Catalan declined. So if this pawn is not picked. So we continue on. Uh, we expect them to castle. Of course, we expect also Harold to castle quick, pretty fast. Then we see B3 on board. Of course, we expect these bishops to come out and... Um, Harold also strikes in this uh, the queen side with a c5. So we see then we see then when uh, Patrick picks the pawn and then pick I uh, also Harold picks back with the knight, and then we see the expected bishop coming out, and uh, also we see b6. We also expect this bishop to fight uh, this bishop. So we see Patrick striking the center pretty fast, and everything goes on normally, and. Uh, Yes, he took with a knight, and then the bishop comes out, and then we see the knight maneuvers. Uh, the knight's coming out. Uh, probably the knight wants to go to c4 or f3. So we see the knight coming out, and then we see the rook on c1. So rook on c1, and then everything goes on fine, and knight to c4 as expected. And then knight takes, and then he takes with the queen. So Patrick takes with the queen, of course, uh, holding the center pretty, pretty strong, and everything is pretty fine so at this point we see the bishop coming in on f6 and challenging this queen and also going for this bishop on b2 and then we see the queen falling back to d2 please note that uh in the database uh the master games we say that it's only knight knight e5 has been played before which is a standard move and there are some two games there between some masters but for the first time uh, in the database we see a move that has never been played before queen to d2 queen to d2 is a standard move of course falling back getting out of the, out of danger and not going for the for the for the knight pin so this is a totally new position at this moment and then we see bishops uh, being exchanged and then uh, queen takes bishop and then the pawn being pushed so this is a new this is completely new territory and uh, this this is a new position that never been never been played before so we see the pawn being pushed. Harold tries to stretch up, of course, I believe, trying to uh, op uh, create some uh, uh, outputs for the knight. But of course, we see Patrick quickly challenging this pawn, and then Harold tries to reinforce that pawn, take, take, and then the position is back to that point. Then we see Rook to c4. Of course, I believe he's trying to come up with these plans of piling and... Uh, making a ballery but everything is fine and we don't see much new at this position until we see some maneuvers on the board and the rook is attacked so 
bishop picks the bishop picks bishop picks the knight and then we see the rook in danger the rook first flies around of course uh threatening some checkmate at this point but of course harold didn't fall for that opens up for the defense and attacking the rook then the rook falls back then we see this uh queen trying to get the pawn but then the knight then we see g5 of course trying to throw away this uh, knight of balance but then we see this pawn hanging and then the pawn picks picked and then we see this fork coming in which is a pretty pretty timely fork attacking the king and attacking the rook this is when things get pretty interesting because right now we can see that there are some threats on the board uh uh black harold wants to strike on the rook uh, this, there's some swift calculation here. I believe these guys took some time at this position. And, uh, of course, trying to... Then he takes the queen. Uh, it takes with... Uh, takes with... Uh, takes with rook. And then we see the the knight taking in. So the rook falls back, of course, opening up the bishop, attack the rook. The rook gets away and then we see the knight in danger. So the rook defends the knight and then we see the bishop disconnecting some connection to not to attack the the king of course patrick uh doesn't stop trying to break the king's side and take take and then we see the king further trying to stretch then we see the rook coming back to defend the pawn and then with this check and then the rook gets out of the way at this point we see that uh, there's some inaccuracy there's some inaccuracy which comes on the board um, at this point, we see that uh, Harold had to play something better than, than Rook. It's amazing how the engine suggests uh, Rook to, to G6. A very subtle move, which I believe uh, Harold was caught off guard. The innocent uh, knight attacking the knight seems to get in trouble because the knight now just escapes smoothly and the position is kind of becoming worse for Harold. The king is coming into the in, into play, and sooner or later, the king, this this black king, is going to be hedged in, and it won't be really, it won't be good for the king. So we see things just getting in uh, so fast. The rook is really getting into very strong positions. At least at this point, we can really say that black is lost, or black is really squeezed. So Black is fighting for some space. Things just get worse when Harold tries to uh, get ready, of course, to push and try to threaten some, make some threats. But uh, this king just blocks all the hopes of that pawn push. Blocking this pawn push, now there's a very scary, threatening uh, attack on the, other, on the king the other side. So this comes in and, of course, um, Patrick quickly takes the rook. And then we can see a new rook coming in by now of course this pawn is falling and uh these things all every everywhere the king the king has to move of course the only option is to come back going down was just disaster uh coming back down which was better than what harold played of course i believe at this point he was feeling so lost he comes back upwards and then we see this preparation for a checkmate in one move so that's how the game went and uh it was a very uh, sad end for Harold, uh, losing that chance to become the Ugandan champion.